Welcome to Unwritten Stories of Significance. I am delighted. Returning back is the most amazing young man, Braden O'Brien. He was part of my past segments with Cora and Manny, who he is the illustrator of that book. But he's here today to share his story on why he loves art and his journey to inspire future youths within their journey. So with no further ado, I'd like to give it over to Braden O'Brien. Hi, Braden. Hi, Joy. How are you? Thank you so much for having me back. I'm so excited. Oh, you're welcome, hon. You have such an engaging smile. Like your <laughs> yeah. smile is so engaging. Like it just opens up just really, really it's beautiful, hon. Beautiful. Thank you. It's funny you say that because my smile, when I was a kid, I had this like huge gap in my teeth. So I was always so insecure and then I got braces and now I just love smiling. So I really appreciate that. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. <laughs> Made my day. Like even if you talk, you're smiling at the same time. Like it doesn't just like this. You smile. Like it's yeah. just so cool. It is so cool, honey. Oh, so well, welcome, honey. Welcome. So look, I know about you. I know about, you know, all the great things that you're doing, but our viewers don't. So what I'd like to do is for you to introduce yourself to the viewers and we'll take it from there, Hanson. Okay, awesome. Hi everyone, so my name is Braden O'Brien. Um, I'm an artist and content creator on social media. Most people know me from TikTok and then I also post on Instagram as well. Um, currently on TikTok, I have around 2 million followers and on my platform, I basically show my artwork and then also some comedy videos. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how I um, started on social media. All right, sweetheart. Now we're going to just roll it back a little bit. And if you see my face going down, it's because we're on camera here, but I'm doing the clock thing. So I'm not being rude. Okay. okay. All, right. All right, sweetheart. So you've introduced yourself there, hon, but I know, let's just read it back a little bit. So you are in university right now. You attend. I was going to say, did you want me to say that? Yes, please. <laughs> okay, okay. I was like, okay. I probably should have no. said that too. No, no, no. You know what I love about this is because it's a conversation. I yeah. love this. It is all, you didn't make a mistake, honey. You did it awesome. You did it awesome. Okay. All right, honey. But now you're going to Western. So what year are you in Western, hon? Um, so yes, I'm currently enrolled at Western University. Um, I'm in my second year and I study um, in their business management and organizational studies program. And I am majoring in consumer behavior consumer behavior yes wow that's pretty cool okay can we just elaborate on that a little minute before we get into yeah the so cons the consumer behavior part of business is more of like the marketing advertising kind of side okay. i thought i was a numbers guy but then i started doing some of the classes here and realized that maybe finance and accounting weren't for me so i went the other route <laughs> oh all right then hon. Yeah. so i know off camera we talked about when you were saying it and i think you said it and my past uh, interviews of Cora Manny is that it's funny that I'm an artist and I'm taking business. So yeah. can you, can you just, just share that little point with me? Because the viewers would like to hear that because, okay, he's an artist, but he's taking business, but why? Yeah. So um, originally I wanted to go to school for architecture mm -hmm. and all the architecture programs um, that I got into were in my hometown. And to be completely honest, like when I was a kid, I thought that I was going to want to stay home. But then as I grew older, got into high school, I was like, mm, maybe I kind of want to go away. <laughs> and then um, I applied to Western, actually. And then I got presented with an opportunity for their Ivy business program. Mm -hmm. um, so then I was like, you know what? It's a really good opportunity. I applied. I worked really hard to get in. Um, I'm going to accept it there. And then hopefully maybe one day I can start a business. Um that kind of like goes along with my artwork and I could kind of combine like my passion for business as well as my passion for artwork and then I'm gonna see where that takes me now so Good that's why you. I chose business um and then also like I was saying I do have um I do love social media and content creation um so I'm lucky enough that at Western they do offer um a bunch of classes like that where I can still like use my skills instead of just doing like you know straight business classes so a lot of my electives are like social media digital communications and then even last year I did take a visual arts class so at Western I'm still allowed or it still kind of allows me to um really like engage and keep up with my hobbies and talents so good for you hon good for you so when you say content creating can you just talk about that a little bit yeah so um basically as I guess as a content creator is basically yes. um, 
in in my own words, I guess it's just keeping up with daily posts on social media okay. and um, I guess constantly um, thinking of new ideas and then creating content to upload to viewers. Wow. That Does that pretty- make sense? No, 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 that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Like some viewers might not know, but it's always good to kind of educate them along the way. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Right? That's awesome. But let's delve into what you love to do. Like you like the business side, but I know you love the art side. In fact, you love the art side. So yes. we're going to show a picture that you did in high school where mm-hmm. you won a regional art program. Yes. All right. So we're going to show that. And I want you to explain to the viewers what that was all about and just tell us the story behind that. So basically I went to high school, enrolled in a visual arts program. Um, So every single year, all four years of high school, I had my art class. And to get into the art class, I had to audition in grade eight. And then I was successful and got in and that's where I went. So this piece right here is a massive painting. It's actually still at my school right now. Um, Father John Redmond in Etobicoke, if any of you are familiar. Um, And this was my final painting project of my grade 12 year. Um, So basically my teacher gave us the freedom to, you know, paint whatever we really wanted. And I really wanted to paint something that had to do with um, teenagers and substance abuse. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's kind of what the piece is illustrating. Kind of how like this man is getting like, um, I don't know how to explain it. Like kind of like taken into this vortex of, kind of like the effects of how um, the substances that he is using kind of like affects his like both mental health um, relationships and stuff like that. So right. it's really up to the viewer to interpret at the end of the day, but that was kind of like the concept that I was going for with it. Now, how large is this picture that still remains at your school? Um, I want to say it's about th- five by three feet. So it's like about five feet high and then three feet wide. Wow. It's really big. <laughs> so now how what did you use like educate me as well as the viewers like was it is it paint or is it spray yes. paint like yeah so this piece was actually done on a canvas with acrylic paint right um so that's how I did it and then I also um designed it first on my iPad and then I went and drew it onto the canvas once I had the design laid out and then I went and used a bunch of different um, painting techniques to complete it and it actually took me three months to finish so it's definitely one of my biggest projects so far Holy cow. So, okay, let's delve into it for a little minute here. So you had this visual picture in your mind and you put it on and then you transformed it onto that huge canvas. Yeah. So I drew it on my iPad first, just so I had the smaller scale of it. Right. Um, And then um, a trick that my professor or I guess teacher in high school taught me, um, we used to use projectors. So we would um, print our like drawings on like acetate right and then we'd put it on a projector and then it would be easier to draw the proportions because we would just like trace the our sketch which made it a lot easier instead of having to draw that like huge face it's yes. really hard to especially with people like getting the proportions right is very challenging so that was a trick that he taught us wow can we bring that picture up again because please because it is so cool thank like, you this man like he has attitude like he's yeah. even got a jawbone for God's sakes, like cheekbones <laughs> and a jawbone. Like, do you have a name for this picture or a name for him? Um, No, to be completely honest, it was just the guy on Pinterest. And it's kind of funny because when everyone used to pass by me when I was working on it, they always, they're like, oh, was that you? And I was like, no, like I don't smoke, but just the guy I found on Pinterest. <laughs> but cow. I think it was the hair. <laughs> yeah, it. no, no, no. It's really, really cool. Really, yeah. really cool. Now you got a regional art award for that, did you not? Um, yes. Yeah. So I actually uh, received the regional arts program for visual arts award consecutively for all four years when I was in high school. So yes. I was at the top of that class every single year. And then I got the distinction award um, as well when I graduated. Wow, that's incredible, Brayden, incredible. Thank you. Did you do any art classes when you were a little taught? Or in, um, in to be school? honest, when I was a kid, I was always more on the creative artistic side um, compared to my brother, who was a more like athletic, sporty side. And I still did sports, but I was more, I don't know, I was more driven to do, um, you know, like 
music and singing and dancing and stuff like that. So I used to take like vocal and guitar lessons. Yeah. And then um, when it was time to go to high school, um, I wanted to do either that or visual arts. Because even when I had babysitters, they would always like tell my mom like, wow, like Brayden has a really, like Brayden has a talent for drawing. Because we would like, you know, draw with markers and stuff with them. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. they would, they would go and tell my mom, like, wow, like you should like seriously, like consider like putting him in lessons or something. Like he's really talented. And I remember, like, I remember that. And then I got, even when I would like draw in class in elementary school, I would just like draw people or like draw my friends for like fun. And they'd be like, wow, like you're actually so talented. Like, and then I started doing it seriously when I found out that my school had a program for it or my high school had a program for it. Mm -hmm. Um, so then I ended up, um, doing a Saturday art class. Um, which was for grade eight students at this high school that I wanted to get into, which yes. gave me an advantage um, getting in because I got to know like the um, teacher and then the environment and kind of what was to be expected in the portfolio requirements. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess before high school, the only really, um, I, I was only really taught from that Saturday class. Otherwise I was pretty much self-taught before then. That's incredible, honey. Like I said, every single person my focus is the youth has a gift and you got it. Thank and on you. That, you do, honey. And on that note, we got to go to break, guys. We'll be right back with Brayden O'Brien. Stay tuned. <music> Welcome back to Unwritten Stories of Significance with Brayden O'Brien. Phenomenal first segment, honey. Thank Phenomenal. you. No, really, really good. I'm going to bring up a picture here because it actually embraces and shows what a content creator is. So if you can have that picture come up and it's really cool. So can you elaborate on this great piece here, hon? Yes. Yeah, so this is a piece that I actually drew for my first um, visual arts class in university. Um, right. So the project was to basically introduce ourselves um, with a piece. So I thought I'd introduce myself with um, the thing that I love, and that's drawing and social media and content creation. So I drew a picture of myself um, with the TikTok logo and then me holding my iPad because I always carry on my iPad. Um, and inside of the iPad, it's a drawing of me as a Disney character. And then as you can see behind, it's kind of like the Disney castle and like little Mickey Mouse ears. And I yes. do that because um, one of the um, or some of the videos that really kind of allowed me to grow my platform was um, the series I did, which was creating diverse Disney characters. Mm -hmm. um, and as well as um, I like drew a lot of celebrities and stuff in the Disney style. Yes. Um, so I kind of wanted to showcase kind of what I was known for in social media and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. So you're probably wondering, um, like, where did you get this idea? Why do you start this idea? So basically it all started, or I started drawing celebrities as Disney characters. So I was trying to, I was getting into this niche of like um, animated drawings and, you know, digital drawings on my iPad and people seem to love that. Right. And then the Black Lives Matter movement um, started. And I was like, okay, how can I, like now that I have this platform, how can I use my platform to kind of, um, you know, do good for the world and like show people that like I'm trying to contribute as well Right. Um, as a content creator and not just be silent about it so right. I was like you know what like I'm doing Disney right now and everyone's always like why are there is there such a lack of diversity in their cinematic enterprise right and I was like you know what like I'm gonna start like creating my own characters and that's what I did so um I forget the first one that I did but pretty much throughout the series you can obviously go see on my account I have like a little playlist of all the videos I, there's probably more than like 40 or 50 of them I did a lot wow it took me all summer. I think it is summer 20, 2020. I think it was right. summer 2020. Yes. Um, and, you know, I drew characters, you know, of all genders, sexualities, races, ethnic ethnicities, um, disabilities, all of it. I tried to include like as much as I could just to, you know, like show like or demonstrate inclusivity and equality towards like all of the TikTok audience and community pretty much. Um, and people loved it. And that's how my platform blew, grew to what it is today. Holy cow, hon. Oh my gosh. It amazing. Like absolutely amazing. I want to jump in here with one question. 
Mm-hmm. When you could, when you drew that yes. uh, piece there for the university that you're attending right now, what mm-hmm. was the re- what was the um, what was the re- the reply? Michael, I'm trying trying to search the words. What was it? What did they say about it? Like, what was your feedback? Um. So yeah, I don't remember the exact. I could probably pull it up if I could find it. Um. But obviously, my um art professor was very. I don't, I don't say overwhelmed, but she was like, the comment was very, very nice. Like, I don't think I've ever received such a nice comment for someone. And I was a little right. bit scared because I didn't know what to expect from a university art class. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, um, yes, I, yes. I did get 100% on the project, which was awesome. But wow. um, yeah, like, as soon as I read it, I think it was the first um, comment I ever got back in an assignment and just like made my day. So it was a really, really nice comment. Well, so. you know something, hon? What you did, you thought outside of the box because you're right. Because when you go to school, everything sometimes as what universities or whatever, students always look at things like this. Exactly. Right? You got to be in the lines. You got to do this way. If you present, you got to be like this. Like, you know what I mean? Where you took your original self and you gave it to them. You presented it to them, which is so cool, hon. Yeah. And as a content creator, like that's what I do every day. I'm always thinking of new ideas outside of the box what someone hasn't already done yet so it's always like unique ideas like how can I like what can I draw today or what can I like act out today or what how can I use this sound on TikTok how can I continue to grow my platform and like make a difference in the world because at the same time it's like some content creators like grow their platform because of their you know they're very attractive or they're talented (laughs) but for me it's like I want to grow my platform because I don't make I want to make a difference in the world so that's kind of why I started that series. I was combining my passion for art as well as trying to be a positive role model for my audience on social media. Well, honey, you're a positive role model because most importantly, you're being you. You're being you. And in that, you are also embracing humanity on a whole. So Mm -hmm. my God, honey, that is amazing. We're going to bring up- you're welcome, handsome. So can I bring up a picture, please, of when you, and correct me if I'm wrong, was it one million? Two. Two. Okay, sorry. The two million. <laughs> oh my there God. it is. So handsome, is that a cake? Yes. Yeah, so that is a bunch of cupcakes. I hit two million followers um this past August. Right. Um, and this was actually taken in my university house. Um, a bunch of my friends, a bunch of us came up to our house this year in the summer to celebrate. And we had a giant party and celebrated me hitting two million. Um, which was really fun. And yeah. <laughs> I love that. Okay, back up here for a second. I love the way you say, oh, it was really fun. Two million? Like, come <laughs> on. Like, you must have yeah. been like, wait, okay, when you switched on, like when you turn on the phone, okay, mm-hmm. and you've seen the numbers, like, okay, what did you think, Brayden? Like, come on, two million. I keep on struggling still at 400, but two million. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah too, it's definitely very um I don't even I can't even use a word to describe it I it's I never would have thought that I would have come this far that I have um mm-hmm. even as a kid like I always admired um you know like YouTubers um you know celebrities I always looked up to them and I was like you know one day like I want to do that and sure enough that's pretty much what I do now maybe not to like their extent like I like two million Bef- like years ago was so much but it's kind of weird because yeah. now two million like on tiktok a lot of people have two million so even for me it's like two million seems like a lot to most people but for me it's like i still need to keep pushing and pushing and pushing until i can have like even more and create this like empire i guess um but yeah keep doing what you're doing honey keep doing what you're doing Thank we got you. lots of, you're welcome, handsome. We got lots of minutes in this segment here. So I'm going to pull everything from your amazing brain. Um, you gave me two quotes and I'm going to read one. I want you just to tell me why you chose this one. Okay. In the world, in the world where you can be anything, be yourself. Albert yes. Einstein. Share so this, my is, this is probably one of my favorite quotes of all time. Um, yes. When I was a kid, my mom got me this little um, tray. And it had that quote on it and I had it on my desk and I stared at it every single day. And when I was a kid, I, or even to this day, but when I was a kid specifically, I was very insecure. Um, Mm. You know, I had really long hair. Um, I wasn't like the most fit kid because again, I like wasn't involved in as much sports as maybe the other boys were. Um, And I was always like, 
I mean, being tall, I like being tall. I'm still pretty tall, but um, I was always very insecure in my skin, especially like the teeth thing I said earlier. I, I hated my teeth, but now they're fine. <laughs> um, so it's always oh. very insecure. And then as I grew older, I realized after like seeing that quote every day, I was like, you know what? Like, I don't care what other people think about me anymore. Like, I'm just going to be myself Amen. and let the world know that. And that's what I do on my social media platform. And I think that's what kind of, um, or why people hesitate to post things on social media is because they're very insecure of themselves. Mm -hmm. Whereas I just kind of let go of that barrier. And now I post because I want to post, not be, not like thinking of like, oh, should I not post this? Because other people are going to judge me for it. Like I couldn't care less. And because of that, I've grown this platform. And if I kept caring about what other people like thought of me, I wouldn't have, like, I would not be where I am today. Um, So I, I live by that quote and I like, I don't know. I love telling people that quote because it's just inspired me so much. So <laughs> yeah, that's why I sent it then. No, honey. Good. You know something? I'm kind of a choked up in a way because of how you talk about your past and how you talk about your future, your present and your future with such enthusiasm. And you're smiling 24 seven throughout every <laughs> sentence, which is beautiful, hon. I don't want to miss this part. Now, Apple, we're going to bring the picture up. All right. Yes. Tell us about this baby, honey. A yes. person that had issues with himself, but now is rocking the social media. Go for it. Yes. So in the summer, I was actually approached by, yes, Apple. Um, I, like, when I got the email, I was at my cottage with my family. And mm-hmm. usually, like, I get so many emails every day. And they're usually scams. But then okay. this one, I was like, wait, like, is this actually real? Because I saw it and like my heart sunk. I was like, wait, like this can't be real. Like what the heck? Right. Um, so then I, I text my parents or I told my parents like, oh my God, like I just got an email from Apple. Like what the heck? Because they know that Apple is like, I, I love Apple. I have literally everything Apple. I have like pretty much a whole Apple store in my room right now. Um, and that's what I wanted to do in the future too, which is why, again, like I'm in business is because I want to work for Apple, hopefully in their marketing or advertising um field um so when they reached out to me I was like oh my god like this is like a dream come true um and we actually know someone who works for Apple and is very high up in their marketing um field in Canada and we my mom texted her and was like hey like Brayden just got this email like do you know this person by any chance or do you know their boss and she responded she's like yes like it's legit don't worry like I know them I've met them like congratulations (laughs) um and all that so um I signed the deal with Apple in I think June and then we were talking and creating the content for the campaign um, up until August Mm -hmm. and this campaign wasn't just any other Apple campaign it was literally with Olivia Rodrigo who is like you know the sensation of um, the year right now or Mm -hmm. last two years so when I saw her name I was even more like oh my god like this is a lot like bigger than I expected um so basically onto the campaign um I'm sure a lot of you know Olivia Rodrigo's um album Sour the first song mm-hmm. on the album is called Sa- or Brutal yep. and um Apple was doing a campaign with Olivia Rodrigo and she was coming out with a music video for this song Brutal and they wanted me to create a digital face paint an animated digital face paint because that's what she was going to be using in her music video right and the way they reached out to me, I guess I do a lot of series on TikTok, um, with, you know, draw, like between drawing challenges, the Disney drawings, other animated drawings um, and stuff like that. So I do a lot of digital face paints and it's kind of cool because I've always been um, like interested in like makeup and stuff like that. But I like kind of like I've never like really put on my face besides Halloween. So then when right. I found out about this, um, I guess ability to be able to do it on my iPad I started trying it out and everyone loved it so I started creating these filters that I ended up uploading to Instagram um and then Apple um I guess saw these and then reached out to me because they were doing this campaign so it was like a perfect fit um and then I was able to design this mask inspired by Olivia Rodrigo's song Brutal for them wow hon holy cow this This is incredible. This show and your story is incredible. Another quote, what you put into it is what you'll get out of it. Clint Eastwood, love the man. Yes. Why Why did you share that? 
And we only I... have 50 seconds left, Hans. Only 50 seconds left. Okay, so I learned this quote at um, a camp that I went to, which is a leadership camp called Camp Olympia. I don't know if I mean, any of you are familiar with it. Yes, I am. Um, but um, the person running the event or the weekend, um, we had a lot of seminars and that's one quote that he kept repeating. And it really stuck with me because it's so true. Um, and it sticks with like literally like, like any aspect in life, whether it's like meeting people, um, you know, your work life, your family life, your friends, like what you put into your relationships or what you put into your work is what you'll get out of it. So if you're just like struggling with school, you know, um, not doing the work, not showing up to class, you're not going to do well. However, if you go to school, um, study, you're going to end up getting good marks. And okay. for me, like, I guess that's kind of how I see it with, or on the content creation side, um, the way I see it is, you know, if I keep putting my like best foot forward, <laughs> doing what I love continuously, almost every single day, then I will end up achieving my goals in the future. And on that note, handsome, you're coming back, sweetheart. We gotta go. Thank you so much, Brayden. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, handsome. That was amazing. Thank you, Joy. Thank you so You're much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Give me the heart real fast. Let's get it in quick. Bye. <laughs> Bye. See you.